Uh, joining us for more on this is former assistant U.S. attorney and Fox News contributor Andy McCarthy. Okay, so you you have the decoder ring. What did all that just mean? It's mostly theater at this point, Dana. I mean, he's fighting this politically. The, the trial is one thing. The gag order stuff is all about the politics of the campaign. And I must say, I think that Judge Merchon understands that putting Trump in jail, which he can do for up to 30 days for any violation of the gag order, would be a catastrophe politically for Democrats. So he's fining him $1,000 every time. There's no doubt that there are violations of the gag order. I think the gag order is unconstitutional, but that ship has sailed. If I were Trump, I'd be tempted to just give Judge Merchon a check for about $10,000 every Monday and say mm -hmm. this is for this week's violations and just mm. go do what he's going to do because I don't think you'll put him in jail. That's clever. Uh, as we like to say, have you read Andy McCarthy today? Uh, and we did. And you say, <laughs> next act in the farce holding Trump in contempt. The big point you make here, Andy, is that if the judge really wanted to be fair, he would have held this trial until after the November election. Yeah, well, that's right, Bill. If what your concern is is the administration of justice, that should be a subordinate concern when we're in a campaign season where there's a public interest in having a presidential campaign with robust political speech and where Trump has a constitutional right to run for office. So if you're worried about the administration of justice, which gives you the ability to do things like gag orders, put the trial off till after the election, and then the judge has a a very important interest in the administration of justice. It's not Trump's fault that this trial got scheduled for the campaign. This was tactically done mm -hmm. by Bragg for exactly the reason that we're seeing, so that they could clamp down on him, clamp down on his ability to speak, and tie him to a courtroom for weeks at a time when he'd otherwise be on the campaign trail. This is all a strategy by the Democrats and the judges letting them get away with it. There's a headline in Forbes, it's called for two, said, could Trump be jailed at Rikers Island for contempt in the New York case? Experts say it's possible. Now, that could just be clickbait, but, I mean, let's ask, answer the question here. I get, is that within the realm of possibility? Well, Dana, the sentence statutorily is a thousand bucks and up to 30 days in jail for each offense. That doesn't mean the judge has to impose it. That's the potential statutory sentence. I think that this case is so driven by politics, they understand that putting Trump in jail, even though Trump obviously doesn't want to spend five minutes in jail, even with the Secret Service coming along with him, but putting him in would be a catastrophe for the Democrats, I think, in terms of the politics of mm -hmm. the election. It would be such overkill for this ridiculous case that I think it would really redound to their detriment. I think the judge knows that. So I think this is all going to be about how many times can we find a billionaire a thousand bucks for transgressing a ridiculous gag order. The, the, the irony is if they send him to Rikers, which for a lot of viewers, if you don't know about this prison, it's horrendous. Right. It's on an island near the airport of LaGuardia. And Trump would see his former accountant there, <laughs> Alan Weisselberg, who's, been, who's now in yes, Rikers it. for the second time mm -hmm. at age 76, Andy. So we'll see what the judge decides another on this. Very serious, an, another very serious criminal. Um, right. Not one of those ones doing that unserious right. stuff at Hamilton Hall or, you know, breaking down the campuses. Yeah, holding a janitor hostage. Um, this is the hostage. second time. As, <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Andy, thank this you. This is the second time that you got a prosecutor who won't prosecute. He puts this guy in twice. Yeah. Uh, Andy, thank you. We'll see what happens in court now. Uh, mm, one hour and 14 minutes into today. Thank you, Andy. Talk soon. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.